every second, 51 tons of food are thrown away around the world. If some of you find it hard to imagine what one ton of food waste really looks like, then have a look at this picture, taken in the disposal area of a hotel. Now multiply this room full of bins 51 times, every single second. Food is beautiful, diverse, tasty and fulfilling, and yet we treat it like garbage. In the past, we used to be hunters and gatherers. We spent endless hours looking for food. We struggled day in, day out, as it was never consistently available to us. With modern agriculture, this all started to change. By using the forces of nature, we started growing and cultivating it ourselves. For the first time, we were able to embrace an abundant amount of food, allowing us to rapidly grow in numbers, but also to start focusing on other things. In many ways, it has kick-started mankind's unstoppable development. Nowadays, this ever-growing abundance means that we have lost the true value of food. We are now accustomed to have full shelves and full plates at all times. With the outbreak of a crisis, such as the corona pandemic, one is suddenly confronted with empty shelves and having to cook at home, making us realize more than ever that food is our life force and that we need to treat it with gratitude. As a society, we are also becoming more affluent, but also spending less and less money on food. To give you an idea, it is estimated that an average European only spends 10% of his or her monthly income on food. Additionally, we are no longer know where all of this food is coming from, as food is traveling longer distances, making us even more disconnected and dissociated. All in all, we have lost the respect for food. Nor do we value the resources within. Throwing away this potato here may only take a mere second, but it took a tremendous amount of time, energy and sweat to even bring it this far. Yes, by wasting food, we're also wasting the resources within. The thousands of liters it took to irrigate and wash it the labor we needed to pick it, the fertilizers that help it to grow undisturbed, the fuel it takes to transport, the electricity we needed to cool it, all the forest that had to be cleared to make way for farmland. Food waste is in many ways an environmental mess. And yet, it also provides us with a massive opportunity to tackle the three greatest challenges of our time. We know that we are in the middle of a climate crisis. Greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, much of which is stemming from the food industry itself. We are now also over 7 billion people on this planet, and it is estimated that by 2050 we will be 10 billion, all whilst 800 million people go to bed hungry every single day. This means unlimited growth on a planet with limited space and resources is simply not sustainable, as we continue to deplete our natural world at unprecedented rates. And yet, it is also no secret that we are running out of water. Irrigation for food accounts for 70%, 70% of all the fresh water we use, while in comparison our daily use to wash or clean at home only make up a small fragment. We are also in the midst of the sixth max extinction, Converting forest area into farmland for crops and space for livestock is currently the biggest driver of deforestation around the world, and with that also the main cause for biodiversity loss. And even our oceans have nowhere to hide. The deadly runoff filled with fertilizers we use to produce food is polluting our seas and with that all marine life. We can simply not continue with business as usual. My message is therefore very clear. By tackling food waste, we can counteract the three biggest challenges of our time. Climate change, growing population, and the destruction of our natural world. So now you might ask, well, Philip, what can be done? And what am I actually doing about all of this? Well, for me, it all started with dumpster diving and a potato. During my time as a student in Copenhagen, while all others would go to grocery stores, my flatmates and I decided to head out 
after closing time and to inspect bin after bin to find edible food thrown away by the stores. Of course, we did save a lot of money with that, but for us the frequent outings became weekly treasure hunts, where we challenged ourselves to only cook with the food that we found. Recipes were only there for inspiration, and cooking became like a creative experiment. And I can tell you, the treasures were bountiful. To give you an idea, in one bin alone, we managed to find 116 bananas, 15 kilos of broccoli, 3 kilos of peppers, and the list goes on. And I promise you, it is not a good idea to eat that many bananas. And yet, it also opened my eyes. For the first time, it made me realize the sheer magnitude of the problem. It made me question, how could this all possibly happen? And yet, it is not making the news as much as it should. Most disturbingly, we found food that was still perfectly edible and that could have been stored for so many more weeks if it was taken care of properly. In that outing alone, we also found 23 kilos of potatoes, a product that my mom told me from an early age was amongst the most durable vegetables out there. And yet, they were a common sight in the bins. So for me, it meant jumping out of the bin and digging further. I now had a mission, unravel the mystery behind it all. And so what did I do? I hired a car, took my camera and left Copenhagen to visit potato farms. I really wanted to start understanding what the main reasons were for wasting so many potatoes and see for myself whether this was happening at all stages of its life, from the moment they were grown all the way to the supermarket. And what I found was simply crazy. For a product that by nature, as you can see, is never really uniform or free of dents or blemishes, the size, shape and color did matter and was in the end the main reasons why the potato was thrown away. They were selected and rejected based on their appearance. So a massive amount never even made it to the grocery store. And the most striking thing of all, neighboring pig farms did not want the rejects either. For pig farmers, it had become more profitable to feed their pigs with more digestible soy flown in from abroad than feeding them with discarded potatoes from their neighbors. It comes to show that our desire for large quantities of cheap and pretty food comes at a massive cost. It now can be debated whether this is down to us consumers demanding these prettier potatoes or whether it is the supermarkets that have created this perception in our minds that only perfectly looking food is actually good enough for us. But it also shows that decisions made by us consumers have implications further down the line. The pretty few, those good enough for the runway maybe, make it all the way down to the grocery store. And even there, some of them still end up in the bin. Not because of their appearance this time, but because of the date written on the package they are wrapped in. While only the very, 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 very lucky ones make it all the way back home. But there they suffer and rot as we no longer know how to store food properly. The FAO estimates that almost half, half of the entire world production of roots and tubers that includes vegetables such as potatoes or carrots is never actually consumed. Half of the entire production. I simply couldn't let go of these insights. And after my studies, I decided to do something about it for my love of food and nature. And so I wanted to find out more on how food currently travels from left to right and whether food is also wasted at the warehouses, at the airports or by the airlines. And so this time I cheated on my beloved potato and went for the Brazilian papaya that is flown into European grocery stores every single day. And even here, food was wasted, as the businesses involved could not align on the common temperature to keep the papaya from rotting. Still now, work is ongoing on how we can better collaborate and be more transparent in order to give papayas a chance to survive this long journey. So after that, I packed my backpack and I flew to Bangkok, 
No, not to party, but it was time to get my hands dirty and to work closely with those people that make the magic happen, the chefs. Together with a small team, we trained hotels and restaurants in both Thailand and in the Maldives on how they could prevent food waste in their daily operations. And the clue was, by simply measuring the amount of food that is going to waste, involving all staff from the different departments and reshuffling the buffets, we were able to drive home some incredible results. But then, in the end, I realized that in order to bring about the systemic shift so bitterly needed in the food system, it was not enough to look at one solution, one geography, or one segment alone, but to instead include everyone in the conversation. We have to acknowledge that the climate emergency, the loss of biodiversity, and the subsequent impact on our health all stem from a common crisis, the food crisis. And we will never be able to stop this crisis without tackling food waste. Yes, it is truly time to build a movement against food waste. Now, more than ever, it is essential to bring everyone together to show solidarity and to work as one towards a common goal. We now have all the right solutions out there, the tools, the technology, everything that we need, we have it. And we also know what is going wrong. The only thing that is missing is a certain sense of urgency and will. And this means everyone finding food waste together. Schools, politics, businesses and consumers. This means we need to influence the young ones and to teach them the true value of food and why it is so important to preserve our planet. At the same time, we need policymakers and governments ensuring that all these changes in legislation are made, national targets are taken seriously, and solutions and best practices are shared between nations. And also, we need food services to start looking at their daily operations and decide not to overproduce, overfill plates and buffets, at the same time, we also need to look at the other ones, such as retailers, who need to start adjusting date labels on packaging and taking the lead in educating us consumers on how to better store food. And also, it needs each and every one of us. It requires all of us to be open in changing our habits and behaviors by demanding this imperfect potato or fruit and vegetable, embracing our leftovers, planning ahead, and using our senses on whether food is still edible or not. Only by each and every one of us doing their part, we will be able to achieve a planet with no food waste. A world where all food produced is also food consumed. To put things in perspective, since the start of this talk, an equivalent of 21 million potatoes have been thrown away around the world. In a time where each of us is trying to find the best way to be sustainable and really feel like we are making a difference, there's nothing, nothing more fulfilling and impactful than reducing food waste. It is in no doubt the most simple and immediate action we can take against climate change, the destruction of the natural world, and to support our planet with an exploding world population. Thank you.